This is draft season. We are here with some updates for y'all. This is, you know, Cam Reddish. Let's not bury the lead. Cam Reddish has been traded. Emergency to pod, Denver. Cam Reddish. Emergency pod, game. yes. Cam Reddish is in the Mecca. The Woj Bomb dropped this. The Woj Bomb dropped this morning. We had to get you guys this content. But first things first, we have to announce, you know, in the words of the BX legend himself, Joe Crack, yesterday's price is not today's price. You know what I'm saying? This video, Draft Season Podcast, we're now sponsored by the wonderful people at Underdog Fantasy, the best and easiest way to play fantasy sports for cash prizes. Make sure y'all are, if you want to support the podcast, support independent podcasts. If you guys mess with me and Raz, make sure you guys head to Underdog Fantasy today. Download the app off App Store or Google Play, and you will get a free deposit up to $100 on your first deposit that matching whatever support the brand we got a lot of content a lot of best ball drafts a lot of drafts coming to you guys in the future um make sure you guys are checking out um the great people at underdog fantasy um and we're proud to be with them man promo code draft season um but raz let's let's get into the show today man we we here to discuss none other than cameron reddish you know what i'm saying yeah. so let's let's get into it bro um how, how are you feeling cam reddish to the knicks so i'm you know off of pure emotion, um, you know, if you're somebody that's familiar with, with the Polo Pivoting brand, you know, me as a person, big Cam Reddish guy, um, to a fault, I, I have been on that side of NBA Twitter where, you know, we're taking a lot of heat for still still loving the potential of, of Cam Reddish. Um, but I think it's one of those things where his situation was bad. I'm not sure. He's he's had some 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 injuries as well. But he has that potential and he has everything in those things you're looking for in a typical wing player in the NBA right now. And he's still younger than some of the draft picks that were drafted in this past draft. So I think you put him in a place where he has a little bit of a chance to play with somebody he he likes um, by all accounts, play with um, a, a coach that, you know, the coach is tough, but if you're defending and you're playing well, he's going to play you. Um, and just get more minutes and, and get, you know, be in a place that feels like they want you. We'll, we'll, we may be able to see this young man flourish, man. Not to, um, not to cut you off. So yeah, let's, um, a little, little, little bit of background. So yeah, the, the trade was Cam Reddish, Solomon Hill, um, and a 2025, uh, second round pick to the Knicks. Um, the Knicks gave up Kevin Knox and a protected 2022 first round pick via the Hornets. Um, so that pick is top 18 protected. So um, <laughs> I guess grand opening, grand closing, how do you feel about the price tag that was paid for for Cameron Reddish? I mean, for the potential reward, that price, I'd pay it every single time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't think, I don't find any issue with a price like that. I think you're giving up a, it's going to be a high first um, and worst case scenario, it's a protected pick, right? And it's not your pick. Um, so you traded a pick where if the Hornets do fall out of contention, you know, for a deep playoff run or a playoff run in general, the Hornets get that pick right back. So that could end up being the Hawks trading Cam Reddish and Solomon, um, Hill for Kevin Knox. Um, I think, you know, the possibility of that would be a hoax or fleece, whatever you want to call it. The Knicks made out with like bandits. So I think for a promising player like that, to give up a first that was extra, it wasn't yours. I think you pay that price every single time. Yeah, man. No, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely with you on that. I think, um, I think we talked about it on our preseason breakdown of the Knicks in general because uh, last last season the Knicks were ahead of schedule. I feel like for certain Knicks fans, the expectations this year. Then first of all, let's say the, the Knicks are playing much better right now. I think they they had to they had to slide in in December. Um, believe they've won seven out of ten. Um, after after that last win against the Mavs, so the Knicks the Knicks are definitely they, they're right in the ship. They're playing a lot better, I think. And going back, I mean, off topic, I suppose, but I think the Memphis Grizzlies are the perfect example of this. The Grizzlies are the Grizzlies have been a solid team for a couple seasons now. Just since they've gotten Josh, since they've had that young core to depth, one of the best bench pieces, um, one of the best the, 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 the deepest benches in the league. But I think that front office was aware that this team wasn't championship ready yet. So even if you have a team that's competing right now, you can't forget that the, the real goal as a front office, as a franchise, th 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 that the city wants, that we know New York wants a championship bad. That's the that's the, the main goal isn't for the Knicks to win 45 games. <laughs> the Knicks is trying to, we're trying to see a ticker tape parade 
down Madison Ave, down 34th Street. That's the that's the main goal here. So I think Leon Rose, I think the front office, I've also said this a couple times on the show, just about what the what the franchise has done uh scouting wise. I think in general, I think that's been one problem that the Knicks have had. That's that's been a, a issue if we're just going back a couple decades. Um, I know I've I've mentioned this stat and it was just crazy going back. I think I, I believe whenever RJ signs his extension, he he's gonna don't be don't do it, don't do it, don't Charlie don't Ward, bro. Stat. Charlie <laughs> Ward, it's, <laughs> a, stat, it's a crazy, it's a crazy stat that they hadn't re signed anybody that they drafted on a rookie scale contract since like '94, bro. I'm talking since my birth year, bro. Basically, that's 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 insane. But on the on the on the bright side, the front, I mean, the general, um, just the scouts and and the whole. Um, the scouting in, in the front office team, they're doing a great job of acquiring talent um, in the yeah. draft where they have it. Grimes has looked amazing. Raz, we saw him at Summer League. Textbook, <laughs> textbook yeah, shot, right shot is beautiful. Yeah. So I, I think, mean, I think McBride this, is tearing it up down there in the G League too. Like they have, you know, this is this is a different. We have Star a front, J, like, Star J Barrett, shout out to friend of the show. Uh, I hate Sean. <laughs> Star J Barrett. You know what I'm saying? Badman yeah. Bennett, Roman Jr. Um, been playing amazing 30 point games, back to back games. I'm like I said, you came on here and said RJ sucked. You know what I'm saying? But I'm holding my, I'm holding my RJ, my RJ stock to. The, I'm going, I'm going down with that one, which is, which is funny that the Knicks now have Cam, because I'm also going down with, with my Cam stock as well. I think Cam. Yeah, I have to. I'm, go, I'm, I'm sinking with that one, bro. Like that, I was gonna hold on to that one to the, the very bitter end. So let's let's talk about Cam for a minute, um, because I think. Like I said, it's it's always interesting to think about Cam and, and what he's done. He was it's always interesting because we talk about that Duke team and he didn't have the best freshman season either. Uh or or that he would probably expect it or, or even because I think it's it's easy to forget at this point, especially when Zion, you know, just became a supernova over time. <laughs> but yeah. Cam was originally the number one prospect in that class between all of them. RJ, Zion, it was it was Cam, and Cam was the first kid. Um, that committed to Duke as well, so I think his situation really changed after those two and, guys know, came. We also know, we also know the the infamous Anthony Edwards video too, right? Where he's like, "Yo, who's mm-hmm. the toughest person to guard?" And he flat out tells Cam you, Reddish. "Cam Reddish." Like he tells you, "Cam Reddish," and it's just from high school. You know, the the his high school tape, like the fluidity in which his game came to him at such a, such a young age, we were watching somebody thinking like he has everything to succeed. And like, to your point where you said um, in his freshman year of college, he took a, a super back seat to those two stars. Coach K, Coach K just used him as a, as a spot up guy. Yeah. That too. He became this cause he was the best shooter. He became the spot up guy and that's not his game um, in terms of he can, he can do it. Right. But I don't think you get the, the best cam reddish. I don't think he feels the best about himself. He's not giving you the best on the court when he's became your, your spot up shooter. He didn't have any creation opportunities because they had a point guard that year. Um, RJ was also shout running a Trey lot Jones. of rock. Yeah, shout out to Trey Jones. And and then you have the Zion show. So it was it was a lot for Cam Reddish to to become that type of player, but he played his role. He played his role. It just didn't work out. Shout out to my people, Michigan State Cashes Winston and them boys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man, I think just 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 going back to Cam for a second, I think that's a great point you made. Just about some that you have your you have your your run of the mill uh, three and D guys, but I think Cam Cam is Cam has so much more. Just watching watching the reel that's running right now, Cam's Cam Cam is just the word that that everybody says is just silky. He does advanced moves and he makes it look incredibly easy and and fluid to 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 another level to where you watch him play and you still see like the, the sky, I still said it earlier, the sky's still the limit for, for Cam Reddish. So we're still it's just running through a little bit of just, you know what I'm saying? Background. If you're unfamiliar, Nick fans, what are we really getting with, with Cameron Reddish? So we talking six, eight, seven, one wingspan, versatile, can handle attack. Like we said, Raz, he can, I think, I think he's more of a, of a, of a spot up. I mean, a more of a streaky shooter than just a, I'm a pure shooter at, at this point yeah. in his, in his, um, in his career, I, he, I think that's probably the other interesting point before I, I go a little deeper. But just just about fit wise, he's going to be playing next to RJ as well. But just in terms of the role that is available to him on this Knicks team, um, free agent next year, and he will be restricted for the Knicks. So 
it I, I think I think this is a good move of just acquiring him before that um for the free agency here. But just in terms of the role he's going to be stepping into, I think uh Knicks fans hate Evan Fournier. Don't Google me. Um he hasn't been good aside from when they play they play on live the Celtics, Celtics are live t- or national TV. That's the on only time TV. that's the only time but he shows role, up. Role wise, what do you what do you see from Cam and just optimizing him the fit next to I, I guess RJ and I think even talking about just going back to to the point about him being a little bit more than just a three and D guy, I think we talk about these um, heliocentric, you know, one man hub offenses. You talk about LeBron, Trey Young; these guys have that game to where um, for some players, the stationary just stationary guys who can't create for themselves, they, it makes life easier. For somebody like Cam, it seemed at least from you know the film watching him that it was hard for him to really find a good you know just a consistent. Um, you know, just consistency in his role and, and finding and, and getting to his spots and, and just finding his niche on that Hawks team. And it really never came. I think even like DeAndre Hunter just looked better uh, playing next to Trey. But when you talk about this role on the Knicks team, how do you feel about where he fits in besides the rest of this Knicks court? So I think he'll, you know, in those games where Fournier doesn't have it right, I think he becomes a person you you put in just because of the positivity he'll add to the team in terms of wing defense. Fournier is leaving a lot to be desired there. Um, I think yes. as, as a yeah understatement, but excuse me, this team right now lacks a point guard, right? Like we don't have a we don't have a starting point guard. We don't even have really a backup point guard. Quickly is doing his best to fill in. So shout out to Alec Burks as well. Um, with that being said, I don't. I'm not sitting here saying Cam's going to come in and be a point guard. I'm sitting here saying that he also offers another ball handling option, um, if called into a role like that. He's not going to be the lead, but he's going to be a great secondary ball handler for them. Um, and then that shooting that we talk about, right? He has the ability to go get his own shot, and you know, at worst, become spot up at, at times. So I think he's going to be a person that could find his way right now. I don't think he starts until something really drastic happens with one of these moves that the Knicks could make as a result of this, because there is a log jam right now at the wing, which is not something we've ever thought we would say about the Knicks either. Um, I think he's going to be somebody who can fill into that seventh, eighth man role right now. Um, If he gets playing well, he could be the sixth man. But I think right now, unless as constructed, He's going to be offensive firepower with defensive upside off the bench. And then from there, um, with any other moves that we can make as a, as a team, um, I think he may be able to, to earn some more minutes. And, and as the roster construction starts to take shape before the trade, de- trade deadline. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see. I think another thing, this was on display at times at Duke about just Cam's motor running hot and cold. I think Fibs is a great coach for him on that end um if Phipps could really light a fire in him um and and really bring that extra intensity to, on, on a game-to-game basis I think that also um just unlocks another level for Cam I think um just taking a look at this game I think one thing a couple things he needs to improve I think this year uh his first couple years in the league he shot uh 33 from three his, his rookie season 26 percent from three last year this year He's up to the 70 70 percentile overall in three pointers um stroking it set uh 37 percent which is, um, like I said, I think if you, anybody who watched Cam, I think anybody always saw him, um, that he would shoot it at some point of his career. Uh, I think the pull-up jump shot, um, shout out to my homie Anthony. He did a wonderful video on Cam. Check out his channel for that. I'm um, just talking about some of his mechanics, and I think um, possibly if he could straighten out some of his mechanics about, um, you know, unlocking some of his pull-up uh, jump shot ability, that would be interesting. I think uh, my other biggest question for Cam would be just in terms of his rim finishing. I think he has an um, interesting uh, finishing packet, uh, package around the rim. He's able – he has some of the most beautiful – in and out dribbles, uh, get getting to that euro and finishing, um, in traffic. But I think as he ages and gets stronger, he starts a thin frame. So I think as he gets, um, adds a little muscle mass to his game, I think sometimes in his game it seems like he's avoidant of contact around the rim. So I think as he gets stronger and really being able to finish through traffic, I think that's really going to really unlock his rim finishing. Right now he is at fifty seven percent from. Um, at the rim, which is 29th percentile in, in the league. So, um, I mean, among wings. So I think that's definitely something that I would love to see Cam approve on. Um, and I think last last point for me, at least, 
just about his defense. I think I also think, you know, just in terms of what he's able to do, I think Cam has the potential to be one of the best wings when it comes to navigating screens. And I think that's really uh, an issue that some wings struggle with being able to really be dislodged um, by a hard screen. But I think Cam has really shown that ability uh, to fight through screens and still be able to uh, contest shots and, and really make whoever he's guarding life um, a living hell. So I think, you know what I'm saying, as, as far as just final takes for Cam Reddish, I'm a, I'm a fan of this pickup. I think, you know what I'm saying, shoot for the stars. I think even if he doesn't break out, I think this – acquisition is the type of swings power swings that the Knicks need to be taking to really you know what I'm saying unlock that next um or or really just become a, a top three team and a, and, a, and a legitimate contender in the east I think if he also has these I think another another reason why you know the Knicks are on the up and up a whole bunch of cost control assets the the, just the, the picks that they've stockpiled going forward, there's a lot that the Knicks are going to be able to do. We don't know who the next star on the trade market will be, or you know, if we're talking about possibly free agency, who's going to be that next star that is going to become that's going to come available. But the Knicks are going to have cap space, young assets, picks, and you know what I'm saying I know people who talk shit about the Fournier contract. I don't think he's untradeable by any means. He's not. He's not untradable. And if you have to get off Fournier, he, you will be able to get off Fournier. So I'm I'm a I'm a fan of of this trade. I what, think this what, is the what type letter of grade you give it? Well, what's what's your letter grade for this trade? You know, with that with the for the Knicks, I think I think yeah. it's a strong B plus for the for the okay. Knicks. I don't I, honestly you could I, I think. Over over time, it'll be an A if if Cam really. I don't even think he needs to get to an All Star level. I think he has everything in his tool set to even if he never makes an All Star game. I think he has the tool set to be a unique, you know, what I'm saying contributor on both sides of the ball uh, that can contribute towards winning basketball. And I think not having to, <laughs> not ha- I mean, I guess I guess Kemba Kemba isn't much better than Trey Young on defense, but I think he's going to be able to play inside of a role. And I think if Thibs is really able to to light a fire on his ass, we could be talking about there's that star upside, it's star equity still in Cam Reddish's profile. So final takes for you, Raz. What yeah, what is yeah. your what is your um your grade for this for the Cam Reddish trade? Um. I'm I'm kind of right with you. I g- I give it an A minus though. I don't want to get too crazy and go to A plus. I'm like because I'm a huge Cam Reddish fan, but I think it, we're at an A minus right now just because. Um, to your point, it's showing the fan base the type of team the Knicks are now, like the type of management that we have, um, the type of direction that that we we're we're taking. I think from there, you know, the potential in Cam himself. You know, like we said, he was at one point the best person in his class. And, you know, I think he's been in situations that didn't call to him, that didn't, you know, maximize who he is as a player. Um, And I think here he'll have a chance to do that. He also pretty much shows up when it's time to show up. He's not afraid of the big lights. And, you know, they say the garden is the big light. So I think he's somebody that, for one, appeases one of our core players, right? Like, by all accounts, they're good. They're friends. And at worst case scenario, if Cam provides us what he's provide, provided the Hawks right now, you took a swing on on great talent and you missed. But it wasn't a contract that we're trading for at the end of a 35 year old, um, you know, on his last knee, you know, trying to trying to bring some relevancy back to the to the garden. I think this is a good, good swing. And at worst, if it misses, it still shows the type of team that the Knicks are willing to try and build. Yep. So yeah, this is this has been a draft season podcast. If you enjoyed this video or any of the content that we do put out, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you smashing that like channel. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. Draft season podcast. We out of here, man.